Hi, my name is Dr. Jim Durr. I'm a professor here in the Department of Veterinary Pathobiology at Texas A&M University. And today we're going to talk a little bit about wildlife conservation genetics. The conservation of biological diversity is a common concern to humankind. This was uh, clearly laid out at a convention in the early 90s when people started realizing that many species of mammals were becoming extinct or becoming rare. Why should we be concerned about species diversity and biological diversity? Mass extinction of life started a little over 100 years ago with a worldwide loss of one species just about every 20 minutes. At this rate, one-fifth of all species will be extinct by 2031. In other words, four of four random mammalian species today Two will decline in population size, and one will be threatened with extinction over the next 20 years. While habitat loss is often the basic issue for species extinction, loss of genetic diversity and widespread disease is usually the final blow to species survival. Conservation genomics is the use of biotechnology for the conservation and restoration of biodiversity. Levels of genetic diversity are directly proportional to a species' long-term ability to adapt, survive, and thrive. Therefore, loss of genetic diversity is detrimental to overall population health and long-term survival. To date, one of the most detailed conservation genomic studies of any wildlife species focused on American bison. My research program alone has published over 20 scientific articles with bison genetics. This species experienced severe and well-documented population declines between 1800 and 1900 that reduced the census size of this species by 99.9%. Nevertheless, the spectacular recovery to over 750,000 animals today is a testament to their genetic constitution and represents one of the most significant accomplishments in modern conservation biology. We've learned a great deal in the last 15 years about bison genetics and bison through bison genetic studies. And now it's time to start applying this knowledge base to conservation of other mammalian species worldwide. Conservation genomics with African wildlife. Why Africa? Why is Africa the place to go to start applying these genomic technologies? Africa is best known for its enormous diversity and richness of its wildlife. It has the largest variety of large ungulates, hooked mammals, over 90 different species of any continent on Earth. We propose, using the bison studies as a model, to expand the use of these genomic technologies for the benefit of African wildlife species. These are based on developing a systematic plan to collect information and genetic samples from captured or killed animals and archiving this material with museums, zoos, and universities within each country. This project has four objectives, and I'll lay out each of these four objectives one at a time. Objective number one is to establish a network of professional hunters for the collection of genetic samples, living tissues, and associated health data from harvested or captured wildlife species in Sub-Saharan Africa. Having this material archive and available to scientists will empower more people around the world to conduct research with African wildlife. We propose to train the people most closely involved with each species in the field, the professional hunters. We, we plan to train them to collect high quality DNA samples and tissues from killed or captured wildlife from at least two different tissue sources. Blood samples are an excellent source of DNA. We are training professional hunters to take blood samples, put them on FTA cards, and then ship them to appropriate repositories. 
In addition, hair follicles can be used to make DNA. And from each of these animals, besides blood, we'll also take hair follicle samples. And from some selected animals, we will take living cells for future cloning needs. In addition to genetic samples, we also plan to train professional hunters to assess the overall health of these animals through systematic screening for evidence and documentation of infectious diseases and evidence and documentation of external and internal parasites. Training professional hunters across Sub-Sahara Africa involves a number of different professional organizations that these hunters belong to and we have put together a number of different instructional videos to show professional hunters and other people associated with wildlife what the best way to collect this information is. All right, guys, we're here at Omiyeva Safaris. It's getting late in the evening, and we just shot this monster black wildebeest, and we're going to take a DNA sample now. So I'm just trying to get in here with a bullet hole, get that card, got a lot of blood, just smear it on, just paint it on like you would. Paint by number. We got some blood right down here. You can just dip right into that. That works too. You want to do that though only if it's really good and clean. You know, you wouldn't want to do it in a bunch of muddy water or something like that. But that blood is perfect. It's doing what we want to do. Just like that. Nice blood sample. All right, we'll stick that right there to dry. We'll come back here to the tail. We always want to collect a hair sample as well. And get back here, grab some of those great tail hairs. Take our pliers and give them just a good yank. And on the ends of those hairs will be lots of follicles. And we can just take and slip them right in a little envelope right there. We give them a little tuck. Close up our envelope, and there you have it. So we got a blood sample and a hair sample. It took about a minute and a half. Sometimes you can't collect DNA samples or even health related samples directly after the animals take it in the field. It may be even hours later when you're able to get to that animal to take a DNA sample or to get some hair samples. So we've also included videos showing people how to get that information from animals that have been killed maybe two or three or four or even eight hours beforehand. So we're talking about getting DNA samples from wildlife species and usually you want to get those DNA samples, blood and hair samples, right after you, you kill the animal, but sometimes you just can't do it. So we are here about four hours after the springbok was killed. He's been skinned, he's been gutted, we've got his heart laying right here. What we're gonna try to do is open the heart up, take the Q-tip, get in there and find some blood that's not coagulated up too bad, clot it up, put it on an FDA card, and then also we can get tail hairs from, from the hive because uh, the hairs will be just fine, nothing, sh nothing should be a problem there. So if we take the heart out of here, Cut it open. The blood's clotted in it a little bit, but we can probably get our sample out of one of the chambers of the heart. Best that we can keep our FTA card as clean as possible. Go ahead and start applying that. Where are we? Okay. Applying the blood to the FTA card the best we can. You don't want to get blood clots on the card. This is not the best way to get a DNA sample from an animal. But maybe there are times when there's no other way to do it and you're either not going to get a DNA sample or you're going to have to get it like this. You can be fairly sterile with it. 
There's no way we're going to contaminate this sample with any other animal's DNA. And that's a sufficient amount of blood to put on an FTA card. Now let's hold that FTA card and let it dry out. And we'll go over here to, to the uh, skin and get some hair samples from the tip of the tail. We've got the tail, this little spring box here, just like we, we normally would if we were in the field. We'll take a few hairs, put our pliers on them. Get a few more hairs here. Pulled out our hair sample. We got still have little follicles on the ends of those hairs. Take our coin envelope. Put these hair samples in a coin envelope. They're a little bit wet, maybe just a little bit bloody. And that's why we always use paper coin envelopes. Because now we have this hair sample in this paper, and it will let that hair sample dry out. If you put it in a plastic bag and seal that plastic bag up, this hair is going to rot, and the DNA won't be any good. If you put it in a hair sample, particularly in a, in, a, in a paper bag, particularly here in Africa where it's really dry, you're not going to have any trouble. That hair sample is going to dry out. So we have our blood sample on an FTA card. We have our hair sample, both taken from a springbok that was killed about four hours ago. And that's it. Program objective number two is to fully develop rapid and economical individual species and subspecies identification technologies. We plan to do this from multiple mitochondrial and nuclear genes. These technologies will be designed so that they can be conducted in any moderately outfitted laboratory around the world. DNA samples don't have to be shipped off to some major laboratory in Europe or the United States or even in South Africa. They can be done, we'll develop these technologies so that they can be done in any university or even a zoo laboratory to identify individual animals or pieces of animals or parts of animals, basically any biological material back to the species that it originated from. Program objective number three is to develop population level technologies to assess biodiversity within and between populations of selected species. We need technologies for determining geographic variation within species, inbreeding coefficients, parentage testing in some cases, and overall genetic fitness estimations. These technologies have all been developed for wildlife species such as American bison. Now it's time to develop this for wildlife species around the world. These technologies will be based on information from domestic animal and livestock genome sequencing projects that have been completed within the last two or three years. Project objective number four, to produce detailed gene maps of selected species using high throughput third generation sequencing and microarray genotyping gene expression technologies. These technologies are used to identify genes that confer important heritable traits such as those involving body size, form size, behavior, fertility, overall fitness and disease resistance. Again, these gene maps will be based on genomic technologies derived from genomic sequencing projects for livestock. Partnering with sportsmen's organizations, species conservation groups, and in-country scientists to develop archived collections of genetic material and health data, and then using powerful new genomic technologies help ensure the long-term conservation of healthy wildlife populations is a novel idea. The ultimate goal is to develop resources and molecular biology technologies to provide for conscientious stewardship of African game species. This is not cheap. 
and somebody's got to pay for it. The people who have the most to gain, the most to give, and the passion for African, for Africa and its wildlife are the people most likely to provide funding for these kinds of efforts. The training, DNA sampling, and archiving hopefully will be paid for primarily by organizations like Safari Club International and local Safari Club chapters. And also sportsmen, hunters, outfitters, and their social organizations. The research part of this project, objectives two through four, has to be funded by folks like the hunters, conservation organizations, wildlife foundations, federal and state governments. In Southern Africa, wildlife are the engine that drives economic prosperity. It's one of the cornerstones of the Peace Parks Foundation. Where you have wildlife, where you have ecotourism, where you have hunting, you have prosperity. Where, Af where in Africa, at least, wildlife has been exterminated, you have none of those economic engines to drive local economies. What about a Center for Comparative and Conservation Medicine in our college, here in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Texas a and I think we need to seriously consider putting together a program to train more graduate and professional students to work with wildlife species. In addition, we can provide more leadership in the application of genomic technologies in medicine and conservation. Also, you might get the chance to work in Africa. It's a lot of fun. Collecting DNA samples from animals um, is a lot of work, sometimes dangerous, sometimes you dart the animals, sometimes the animals are lethally taken. I've worked in Africa and collected DNA samples from everything from elephants to steinbocks, and every animal is fun. Um, right in the middle of this picture you see a male lion that was just darted. It took about seven or eight of us just to pick him up in order to get him out of the back of that truck. Uh, we collect DNA samples. Picture in the center bottom there is uh, applying blood sample from a elephant to an FTA card. Uh, but we also have to partner with hunters. And hunters go out and spend a lot of money and take animals. And once those animals are killed or harvested, we can collect our DNA samples from those hunter killed animals. So with an eye to the future, we are looking towards the conservation of these species using modern molecular biotechnology.